In this lesson, we're going to talk about how to solve a quadratic equation by factoring. So first, I want to tell you what quadratic means. You've already been dealing with quadratic expressions. We just never have called them that yet. So quadratic means that the highest variable power is 2. So any expression where the highest variable power is 2, like has an x squared variable term, that that would be a quadratic expression. So here is a good example of a quadratic equation. We have x squared plus 5x plus 4 equals 0. Now it's quadratic because we have this x squared term and it's an equation because we have equals 0. So you can't solve an equation, remember, unless you have an equal sign. When we were factoring earlier, we couldn't solve because it didn't say equals zero, but now we have an equation. So we'll be able to figure out what values of x make this expression equal zero. Well, we can't solve this by isolating x the way we did when we learned to solve linear equations. Because here you have x squared and x, and these can't be combined because they're not like terms. So it has to be done by factoring and using the zero product principle that we learned in the last lesson. Now if you look at x squared plus 5x plus 4, you know that that's a trinomial and it can be factored into two binomials. And so first times first is going to be x times x. The signs need to be the same and they both need to be positive. And last times last could either be 2 times 2 or 1 times 4. If we use 2 times 2, our middle term will not add up to 5. So we'll put in a 1 and a 4. And now notice that if you calculate the outer plus inner step, you'll get 4x plus 1x equals 5x. So this is the correct factoring for this expression. Now, using the zero product principle, if x plus 1 times x plus 4 equals 0, one of these parentheses has to equal 0. So if x plus 1 equals 0, we'll get one answer. And if x plus 4 equals 0, we'll get the other answer. So here, to solve x plus 1 equals 0, I will subtract 1 from both sides, and that will give us x equals negative 1. And for x plus 4 equals 0, I will subtract 4 from both sides, and that will give us x equals negative 4. So our two solutions are negative 1 and negative 4. And, of course, the order that you list these solutions in is not important. Now we're going to do a couple of other examples together. Notice that both of these examples start out with the equation equal to 0, so... Uh, we're able to just start factoring right away. So um, this is a trinomial, and it will factor into two binomials. First times first needs to be 2x squared, so I'll use 2x times 1x. The signs need to be different, so I'll put down a minus and a plus. Last times last has to be 4. So again, it's either 2 times 1, or 2, two times 2 rather, or 1 times 4. But I know that I can't put a 2 here. So, because of the 2x that I already have. So, if I can't use 2 times 2, I'll have to go with 1 times 4. Now, I also cannot put a 4 here. So, I'll use 1 here and 4 here. And now, if you check outer plus inner, outer times outer is 8x. Inner times inner is negative 1x. 8x minus 1x is 7x. So, if this times this equals 0, one of my factors must be 0. If 2x minus 1 is 0, I, I get one answer. And if x plus 4 is equal to 0, I'll get the other answer. So for 2x minus 1 equals 0, we will add 1 to both sides. That will give us 2x equals 1. Then we'll divide both sides by 2. And that will leave us with x equals 1 half. For the other factor, x plus 4 equals 0, we'll subtract 4 from both sides, and that will give us x equals negative 4. So our two solutions for this equation are 1 half and negative 4. 
Okay, for this, for this equation, 3x squared minus 4x minus 15 equals 0. Um, I do have 0 here. That means I can start factoring. So uh, this is a trinomial. It's going to make two binomials. First times first is 3x times 1x. The signs need to be different. And last times last has to be 15. Well, of course, that makes us think of 3 times 5, but because of the 3 here, I can't put a 3 here. So I'll put the 5 on the left side and the 3 on the right. And now just double check. Outer times outer is negative 9x. Inner times inner is positive 5x. Negative 9x plus 5x is negative 4x, so that's good. Now, if this times this is 0, one of my factors must be 0. So if 3x plus 5 is equal to 0, that will give us one solution. If x minus 3 is equal to 0, that will give us the other solution. To solve, we will subtract 5 from both sides and divide both sides by 3. And that gives us x equals negative 5 over 3. For the other factor, x minus 3 equals 0, we will add 3 to both sides and that will give us x equals 3. So now we have x equals negative 5 thirds or positive 3. Now it doesn't always happen that you get an equation that's set equal to 0. If one of the sides is not equal to 0, we'll have to move all the terms to one side of the equal mark. In this example, we have 3x squared equals 2x. Well, it's a problem that I don't have a 0 on this side. So, I can get rid of this 2x if I subtract 2x from both sides. On the right side, 2x minus 2x is 0. But on the left side, notice that I have different types of terms. So, 3x squared minus 2x has to be written like this. 3x squared minus 2x equals 0. I can't combine these because they're not like terms. I can, though, factor now. I have two terms, so this is not going to factor into two binomials, but I can factor out a common factor, which is x. Also, notice that moving a term to the other side changes its sign. So where this was 2x on the right side, it's now negative 2x on the left side. Because of this subtracting operation we did, when the thing shows up on the other side, it takes on the opposite sign. So we'll use that from now on. Instead of showing this step, we'll just be able to move things to the other side and change their sign. But let's go ahead and factor the common factor from 3x squared minus 2x. And that common factor would be x. And in parentheses, that's going to leave 3x minus 2. And it's all equal to 0. Now just make sure you agree that x times 3x is 3x squared and x times negative 2 is negative 2x. So all we did is factor the GCF out like we learned several lessons ago. Now if this times this equals 0, one of the factors must be equal to 0. So x could be equal to 0 or 3x minus 2 could be equal to 0. If x is equal to 0, that's just one of our solutions. If 3x minus 2 is equal to 0, then we'll take the 2 to the other side of the equation and divide both sides by 3, and that will leave us x equals 2 over 3. Notice that when I took the 2 to the other side of the equation, I changed its sign. Instead of showing the plus 2, plus 2 step, this is a little shortcut we can now let ourselves take. So x equals 0 and x equals 2 thirds are our two solutions. We'll just solve several examples together now. Here I have x squared equals 6x minus 9. Now remember, before you start, you must have 0 on one side of the equal mark. So I'll need these two terms, these two terms, to move over to the left side so that I can have a 0 over here. If I take the 6x from the right side to the left side, 
it will become x squared minus 6x. And if I take the negative 9 from the right side to the left side, it will become positive 9. And now, since I've moved both of these terms to the other side, now it equals 0. And now you can see it can be factored. It's a trinomial, so it's going to factor into two binomials. First times first has to be x squared. The signs need to be the same, and they both need to be minus. And last times last has to make 9. So I'm thinking 3 times 3. Let's make sure that outer plus inner adds up to negative 6x. So negative 3x minus 3x does add up to negative 6x, and we're in good shape. Now these two factors both happen to be the same. That means even if I solve them both, I'm only going to get one answer. So if x minus 3 equals 0, and I take this minus 3 to the right side of the equation, I now have x equals positive 3. And that is our only solution. Even though this 3 is the solution for both factors, there's no need to list it twice. Okay, now on part b, 4x squared equals 25. So I can't work the problem while I have 25 over here. So I will move the 25 from the right side to the left side, and it will say 4x squared minus 25 equals 0. Now, if you recognize this type of expression, this is a difference of squares. So that's going to factor into two binomials. First times first needs to be 2x times 2x. The signs need to be different, and 25 needs to be 5 times 5. So now I have 2x minus 5 times 2x plus 5 equals 0. If 2x minus 5 equals 0, we get one answer, and if 2x plus 5 equals 0, we get the other answer. So to solve 2x minus 5 equals 0, we will move the 5 to the right side of the equation and divide both sides by 2, and that answer is x equals 5 over 2. To solve 2x plus 5 equals 0, we will subtract 5 from both sides, or actually we'll just move that 5 to the other side of the equation and divide both sides by 2, and we'll get x equals negative 5 over 2. So our two solutions are positive 5 over 2 and negative 5 over 2. Now, on this example, part C, we've got x squared minus 11x equals negative 10. The only term I need to move is the negative 10. So I will move negative 10 from the right side to the left side, and it will become x squared minus 11x plus 10 equals 0. Now this is a trinomial, so it's going to factor into two binomials. First times first has to be x times x. The signs need to be the same, and they both need to be minus. Last times last is going to be 5, or rather 1 times 10. Now double check that outer plus inner is negative uh, 11. So negative 10x minus 1x does add up to negative 11x. So now we'll say uh, x minus 1 times x minus 10 has to be 0, means that either x minus 1 is 0 or x minus 10 is 0. So here, if we move the 1 to the right side of the equation, we'll get x equals 1. And here, if we move the 10 to the right side of the equation, we'll get x equals 10. So those are our two solutions. Now remember that one of the sides has to be 0. So if you have an equation like this, where one factor times another equals 6, you can't just set these two equal to 6 and keep going you have to start out with a 0 over here. So in order to get this 6 combined with the rest of the problem, we'll have to multiply this out using the FOIL method. So x times x is x squared. Outer times outer is 3x. Inner times inner is minus 2x. And last times last is negative 6. And it's all equal to 6. Now, I'm going to do minus 6 on both sides so that this right side will be 0. And at the same time, while I combine these two terms, I'm also going to combine these two x terms. 
That will give us x squared. Then 3x minus 2x is 1x. And uh, negative 6 minus 6 makes minus 12. And now 6 minus 6 makes 0 over here. That's what we wanted. Now this can be refactored. So this is a trinomial. It will factor into two binomials. First times first has to be x times x. The signs need to be different. And I'm thinking in order to get our middle term to add up correctly, we'll need last times last to be positive 4 and negative 3. Now, if this times this is 0, one of our factors has to be 0. So we could say x plus 4 equals 0 or x minus 3 equals 0. If x plus 4 equals 0, take the 4 to the other side of the equation and you'll have x equals negative 4. If x minus 3 equals 0, take the 3 to the other side of the equation and you'll have x equals 3. Our two solutions are negative 4 and positive 3. And here's another similar example. And I suggest that you try this one on your own before you watch me work it. Okay, so here we go. We can't, you, we can't set these two factors equal to 0 because we don't have 0 over here. This one times this one equals 28. So there's nothing we can do except try to combine the 28 with these things over here. So we'll have to use the FOIL method. x times x is x squared. Outer times outer is minus 2x. Inner times inner is minus 5x. Last times last is plus 10, and that equals 28. Now, combine your two middle terms, and at the same time, let's do minus 28 on both sides. So we'll have x squared, negative 2x minus 7x gives us, or sorry, negative 2x minus 5x gives us negative 7x. 10 minus 28 gives us minus 18. And on the right side, 28 minus 28 gives us 0. And now that we have this 0 over here, this trinomial can be factored again. So a trinomial factors into two binomials. First times first has to be x times x. The signs need to be different. 18, my choices are either 1 times 18, 2 times 9, or 3 times 6. So I'm going to choose 2 times 9 so that my middle term will add up to negative 7x. And I believe I want the 2 to be positive and the 9 to be negative. Now let's just double check. Outer times outer is negative 9x. Inner times inner is positive 2x. Negative 9x plus 2x is negative 7x. So if this times this equals 0, one of my factors has to be 0. If x plus 2 equals 0, then I can move that 2 to the other side of the equation and get negative 2. If x minus 9 equals 0, I can move this negative 9 to the other side of the equation and get positive 9. So our two solutions are negative 2, there's my negative, negative 2 and positive 9.